Can I use a higher wattage power supply with my laptop? Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com. If you're not getting Confident Computing, my weekly emailed newsletter, go to AskLeo.com slash newsletter and sign up today. You'll get tips, tricks, and answers to questions like this every week in your inbox. Speaking of answers, how about the question? So I did this search on your answers to power supplies, but I'm still not clear about the difference between amps, volts, and watts. I've got a 130 watt power supply left over from my last Dell laptop that I would like to use on my new Ultrabook, which came with a 65 watt power supply. Both units are 19.5 volts, but the 130 watt is 6.7 amps and the 65 watt has a rating of 4.6 amps. What I'm trying to accomplish is keeping the 65 watt unit wrapped up in my laptop bag and the 130 watt wired into my desk for convenience. I do exactly what you do. I do the same thing. And from what you describe, you should be able to use your 130 watt power supply in place of the 65 watt power supply just fine, as long as a couple of conditions are met. And I'll talk about those in a moment. But like I said, assuming they're from the same manufacturer, um, they've got the same plug style, sounds like something I do myself often, to be honest. The real question here is this confusion between volts and amps and watts. Trust me, you are not alone. Um, unless you've studied electrical engineering or had a little bit of experience with electronics or something along those lines, it's very easy for those terms to be so much magic, so much more geek terminology that um, honestly, you don't care to understand. And I totally get that. However, this is a case where you really kind of sort of want to understand at least a couple of basics about this. And I'm going to put this in terms of power supplies, not in terms of electronics. There are rules and the rules are very, very simple. The output connector must match. In other words, whatever it is you're going to plug into your laptop, that has to be the same. In addition, the polarity, the plus minus polarity of that connector also must match. In other words, if the old one had negative in the middle and positive around the outside or the ring, then that's what your new one needs to have. And we'll show in a minute exactly what you're looking for to understand which is which. And then the output voltage must be the same. In other words, in your case, I think you said 19.5 volts. As long as both of them are 19.5 volts, so far, so good. If those conditions are met, you're on the right road. Now, there is one additional requirement, and it can be expressed either of two ways. The output amperage of the replacement must be greater than or equal to that of the power supply that it's replacing. Another way to look at it is it must be greater than or equal to what your laptop needs. But we're assuming that the old power supply is what your laptop needs. So in your case, 6.7 amps is greater than 4.6. You're good. The other way to express this is in wattage. The output wattage must be greater than or equal to that required by the laptop. Your old power supply was 65, implying that that was enough for the laptop. Your new one is 130. That's greater than 65. Therefore, that power supply would be more than enough for your laptop. It's not pushing 130. It is capable of providing 130. If all your laptop is going to use is at most 65, then you've got plenty of room to spare. Now, it is really, really confusing. I get that. And in fact, if you take a look at this label from one of my Dells uh, from uh, a little while ago, you'll see it is just packed full of all sorts of bizarre information that honestly, we just don't need to know about. There's nothing that we care about in this full label with one exception. And that is if you zoom in to the input and output specification. That's where all of this information lies. Now, to be clear, input is the power that is provided by your wall socket. That's describing what this power supply needs from your house power, or from your lines or from your, your plug in in the wall. 
Um, in this case, this particular sp uh, power supply that I took example of will take anywhere from 100 to 240 volts. That's a nice wide range because it covers both the US 120 volts standard and then the 240 volts that is common elsewhere in the world. The good news is that this power supply will work on either of them automatically. You also notice that it says 50 to 60 hertz. That's one of the other things that changes depending on where you're at. But again, this power supply works with any of those. Anything between 50 to 60 hertz, the power supply is happy. I mention this not because it has anything to do with your laptop. It doesn't. It has everything to do with whether this power supply will work with your wall socket. Most power supplies these days are very similar to what I've just described here. Most of them now accept a very wide range of input voltages. The 100 to 240 is really, really common and will automatically deal with the difference in Hertz. Now, the output, this is what we care about. The output of your power supply is the power that it is providing to your laptop. Now, in my case, Son of a gun, I've got a 19.5 volt power supply. It's a Dell. It's probably, it may even be the exact same power supply that you were looking at originally. And it provides 4.62 amps. Now, to be clear, it can provide up to 4.62 amps. Your laptop will only take what it needs, but it'll go up to 4.6, 4.62. Those are the numbers we care about. Those are the ones that the voltage must match and the amperage must be greater than or equal to whatever it is your laptop requires. And if you're not sure what your laptop requires, then just look at the old power supply, the power supply that came with the laptop and use that number, be it amps as is listed here, or sometimes it'll be labeled as watts. So, one more thing on this uh, diagram that's even smaller and yet probably even more important, and that is the polarity. You'll notice that there are a number of different sizes, shapes, and conditions of power sockets that go into laptops. There's a movement towards using USB-C as your power provider, but especially on these Dell laptops and on some many other laptops, It'll be a round connector where there's a connector on the inside. If you take a look, there might very well even be a pin in some cases. And then there's a sleeve or a, a ring around the outside. One of those will be positive. One of those will be negative. This diagram that's present on the power supply will show you exactly which it is. If the dot in the center is labeled with a plus sign, then you've got a positive center, negative on the outside connector. If, on the other hand, the dot on the inside of that connector is labeled with a minus, then it's negative on the inside and positive on the outside. This may seem like a lot of fuss, but unfortunately, this one's probably almost as important, maybe even more important than getting the voltage right. Depending on the quality of your laptop, getting this wrong can cause damage. So by all means, make sure that this one is correct for any replacement power supply that you happen to get. Now, in many cases, there'll be no question, right? If the, if the, uh, the plug is square or it's notched or it can only go in one way and it matches what's on your laptop, it's probably already polarized properly for that situation. This is usually a problem only with what are called barrel connectors, these round ones only because there's no standard. There actually is no standard as to whether or not positive should go on the inside or the outside. Um, there are different opinions, but it doesn't matter. From a practical standpoint, there's no standard, so you need to check. The good news here is that the standard is true within a company. For example, you'll probably find that all of your Dell power supplies that use the same sized barrel connector will be polarized the same way. But do check, make sure you check. So, like I said, the output voltage provided by the power supply needs to, to match the voltage that's required by your laptop. Something else you could determine from the old power supply that came with it. And then amps or watts must be greater than or equal to. You'll notice that the Dell power supply that I used for my example doesn't talk about watts. 
It only has volts and amps. And that's because there's actually a mathematical relationship between the two. It doesn't matter which one you get. Like I said, it doesn't matter which one you need to compare. If you're given watts, compare watts. If you're given amps, compare amps. But that's all you really need to do. The real question is, what happens if your old power supply tells you that it is 4.6 amps and your new power supply tells you that it is capable of providing 130 watts? How do you compare the two? It turns out watts is a measure of power. Watts is equal to the voltage times the amperage. So in the case of my example, power supply, if I take 19.5, the number of volts, times 4.62, the number of amps, that tells me I have a 90 watt power supply. So the same thing works if you've got watts divided by volts and you'll get amps. If you've got amps, multiply it by volts and you'll have watts. That's all you really need to worry about. And even then, most of the time, especially if you're getting the uh, a power supply from the same manufacturer, not only will they be consistent about the connector, but they'll probably be consistent about whether or not they specify things in watts or amps, or in some cases, even both. Now, the question you may be left with is, what if the watts or the amps are less? In other words, what that means is, what if my power supply is not rated to provide enough power, measured as watts or amps, to, that the laptop might require. And unfortunately, there is really no single answer to that. It depends on how far off it is. It depends on what you're doing with the laptop. Because like I said, the laptop itself is only using the power that it needs. The fact that your power supply might provide 4.6 amps of power really only means that it is capable of providing 4.6 amps. Chances are when the machine is just idling, it's using much, much less than that. So if your laptop is working really hard and you've got all sorts of things hung off of USB ports and you've got all sorts of other things draining power and you've got the, the brightness set to maximum, then maybe it's going to approach 4.6 amps. What if the power supply doesn't provide that? What if it only provides four amps? What if it only provides three amps? It depends. Most of the time with laptops, they will either charge more slowly, not charge at all, and some will warn you. It's rare that this will actually cause a problem. Like I said, it really, the, the worst case with a laptop is that it will act like there's no power supply at all. It'll just continue to run off battery and not charge. But it is something to be aware of. And I've been actually pleasantly surprised with a couple of recent laptops, I think including one of my more recent Dells, that if you plug in an underpowered power supply, uh, it will tell you that, you know, this power supply, it's not what I really need. I'll do the best I can with it, but I may charge more slowly, I may not charge at all. And that's kind of sort of what happens in the world of laptops. So in short, match the connectors, match the polarity, match the voltage, and then make sure either the amps or the watts are greater than or equal to what is needed. That's it. Hopefully it helps. For updates, for related links, for comments and more, visit askleo.com 5982. I'm Leo Notenboom and this is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.